ever if either of these dates is correct. Robert Schock's date, seven to nine thousand years ago, could double the lifespan of the statue. If he's right, the building of the pyramids would no longer be civilization's first great achievement, but instead the inheritance of an earlier tradition. John West's date, 10 to 12,000 years ago, means that before our ancestors even formed stable communities, there was a mysterious culture with abilities as great, or perhaps greater, than anything that came later. But these distant dates for the builders of the Sphinx are uncertain and speculative. More evidence is needed. Water is the key. If it was rain that eroded the Sphinx, when was the Sahara wet enough? Time Watch commissioned a study in the laboratories of Drylands Research at Sheffield University, an international center for deserts, their water, and their people. We asked the scientists when the desert had been wet and when people had lived there. If we go to the Eastern Sahara today, we find that it's a very harsh environment. It gets about 50 millimeters of rain a year. It's very dry, it's very hot very windy. Most of the life centers around the Nile River. But it hasn't always been like that. If we go back to about 4,500 years ago, when the pyramids were built, we can tell that this area was indeed much wetter than it is today. Now, the main evidence we have to suggest this comes from the extensive lake sediments in this area. And these lake sediments act basically as an environmental tape recorder. And trapped within them is a record of what the environment was like in the past. Now, pollen, for example, from these has indicated that rainfall was probably in the order of about 400 millimetres a year. Now, that isn't unlike the amount of rainfall we get in some parts of East Anglia today. Between 7,000 and 10,000 years ago, the climate did tend to fluctuate a little bit. So we have wetter and drier periods. Humans still lived in this area, but they tended to live by hunting. They developed very, very sophisticated specialist tools for their way of life. But at about 10,000 years ago, we see quite a dramatic change in the climate of this region. Indeed, throughout this period from 10,000 years ago to 20,000 years ago, we have no evidence that any humans were living in this area. This was an area that was very dry, was very cold. It was the time of the last ice age. If we go back further in time, before 20,000 years ago, we find evidence throughout this area that humans lived here. These are stone tools from about 30, 40,000 years ago, and their presence in this region suggests that it was a much wetter place. Whether a new date for the Sphinx goes back this far, or simply to wetter times in the 6,000 years before the pyramids, there's still one major theoretical problem. Where are the other remains of the earlier people who might have built the Sphinx? Could the evidence of a whole civilization just be washed away? There's absolutely no doubt that the, the Earth passed through a traumatic period between 15,000 BC and 8,000 BC. What happened in those 7,000 years was that ice in the Northern Hemisphere that had taken 50,000 years to build up, completely all of it melted and most of it melted in about 2,000 years. We had massive animal extinctions all across, across the planet, particularly in the 11th millennium BC. More than 70 genera of, of animals were, were completely wiped out uh, at this point. Um, it's quite obvious that the human species was affected by this as well. We were around, men and women just like us, just like ourselves, um, went through the experience of the last ice age. Uh, it was an experience, as I say, that completely changed the face of the world. And I think if we're looking for a lost civilization and to what got it lost, the answer lies at the end of the last ice age. That's why the traces are so faint, because it's very, very, very far back. It's a long way back, and we find echoes of it in myths and in certain monuments. I felt that the matter was effectively proven, and this is what I continue to feel. In other words, until somebody can come along with a theory that shows why the Sphinx is weathered the way that it is, and the stuff right alongside it is not weathered, uh, the matter is, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely cut and dried and proven. 
John West's success has